Well, we got a couple legislators here who may be well rested by now. Uh, what were they doing? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Frankly, if you ask them what they were doing after 2 o'clock, you know, some no, some don't, some don't remember, some voted no just because of it, some, you know, some were uh, half asleep. Uh, the speaker made a promise that he didn't live up to. Is it earth shattering? Is it the end of the world? Not necessarily, but uh, we'll talk to two Republican state legislators about the session that has just passed in uh, the wee hours of the morning. Nice to have you. Thanks for joining me on this Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed Sean Daly last night. I took a little time off yesterday from radio and television. Uh, and so I'm catching up on some of the legislative stuff. But first, let's catch up on what's going on with the uh, presidential race. Uh, Hillary Clinton made the economy a big deal here today. Here are some of the headlines. She did target Donald Trump in an economic policy speech. And she just, I mean, really, she, she just creamed him. Uh, of course, he tweeted back the entire way. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Uh, a little bit of a difference between $1.3 million and $42 million, don't you think? Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. And there's a graph that kind of shows the difference uh, in the money. Here's the latest on, on the campaign. Donald Trump says it's time for a different kind of campaign as he shifts to the general election. The presumptive Republican nominee is meeting with evangelical Christian leaders a day after dumping his longtime campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. I'm really proud of him. He did a great job, but we're going to go a little bit of a different route. Right. Lewandowski denies clashing with Trump's children, especially daughter Ivanka, and says he still supports the billionaire businessman. If Donald Trump wins, that's good for Corey Lewandowski, and it's good for the country. A group of religious leaders opposed to Donald Trump held a protest in Times Square ahead of his meeting with evangelical leaders. He consistently is scapegoating the religious minorities of this country and blaming them for all of our problems. This is a moment in which we have to preach the message of faith over fear. The meeting comes as Trump's poll numbers slide, especially in swing states. The latest Quinnipiac poll shows Hillary Clinton with an eight-point lead in Florida. Trump's small lead in Ohio has disappeared, and Pennsylvania is too close to call. Clinton is in Ohio, where she will speak about the economy and go after Trump on what many say is his biggest strength, his business skills. You know, I, I think it's interesting that Donald Trump said that he was going to self-fund this campaign, did he not? Yeah, and, and now, now he's got this thing going where, hey, I'll match your, your contribution up to $2 million today. It's a very strange little thing going on. Obviously, there's a shift. And obviously there's a worry because as this thing starts to narrow, you can fall real fast. So with this campaign management decision, clearly he knows it's almost, even though it feels early still, now or never. Uh, next item, this is too much. Now, I suffer from allergies, so I feel a kinship. I really do with uh, Representative Carnavale. Look at the headline here. Uh, yeah. Um, Tim White filed this report prior to today's developments, but it sets the scene, and I'll tell you what happened. An attorney I spoke to says these challenges are usually handled very quickly, and that's because officials want to make a decision before any important election deadlines. You have no story. Last week, the state Republican Party filed a challenge to Representative John Carnavale's residency with the Providence Board of Canvassers. Do you have time for us, Rep? The action comes in the wake of a Target 12 investigation that raised questions about where the lawmaker actually lives. Our undercover video of him at a home in Johnston outside his Providence district included this bizarre moment when, after apparently spotting one of our undercover vehicles, he wraps a T-shirt around his head. Two former tenants told Target 12 Carnivale did not live in the Providence home, and the state rep signed this mortgage document promising the bank he'd live in the Johnston house. You have no, you have no story here. Last week, Carnivale amended nine years' worth of ethics filings to finally disclose the Johnston property. Over the weekend, Carnivale sent this letter to his constituents, claiming he wrapped his face because he suffers from allergies. The letter did not address Carnivale's failure to disclose the Johnston property to the Ethics Commission. A spokesperson says the Board of Canvassers meeting is to simply review the GOP's complaint. We're told no testimony will be taken and Carnavali is not required to be there. If the board decides to pursue the case, they will schedule a hearing where they can take testimony and issue subpoenas to gather evidence. 
With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News. And they did decide. How could they not decide to take that case? I don't know how he beats this rap. I, I really don't. The, 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 the story is so self-explanatory. The T-shirt for the allergies is incredible. Um, Matt Allen's producer, Doug McGonigal, over at WPRL coined the term carnivalogy today. And I have a feeling that that's going to stick. Uh, I get carnivalogies. Sometimes I literally, some, I literally have to hold on to the table sometimes because this time of year. It, mm -hmm. So I, I feel a kinship with the state representative, although I know where I live. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, last night, I mean, I should say uh, Friday night into Saturday. You know, when I take a four-day weekend, I get a little confused myself. So while I was having a little vacation, these poor folks were asleep at the wheel. Now, the Speaker of the House had uh, made a pledge early that, you know, a couple of years ago, I think, that he would never pull another stunt like this. But he feels like he got cornered, I guess, into it by the Senate president. State Representative Patricia Morgan is here. Welcome. Good. I think, uh, um, I hear that you left at two. I left at four. Oh, you left at four? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's still an hour early. <laughs> yes, it was. But I realized I didn't even know what I would, I was trying to read the bills and I couldn't make heads or tails of them. I was just tired, so I left. Uh, the minority leader, Brian Newberry, just voted no on everything after 4 o'clock. Yeah, but you might be voting on things that are good. You know, it's just, to me, it was better not just to go, not Just, just not to say, it. I abstained or I was gone. I'm, as, because I'm abstaining on this. That's right. Well, you know, I, I'd hate to characterize the entire legislative session just on this overnight stunt. I mean, there were, what, what was your reading? There was some back and forth. It was actually seemed like a power struggle between the Democratic leadership, back and forth. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't think they were very well organized, to be honest with you. We, they didn't even start posting bills for us to read until around 6 o'clock. We should have had the day's agenda early so we could read and understand what we were voting on. So I, I, to me, it, it was foolish to make us keep going on. Um, you know, get done what, what was reasonable, get done, and let's come back on Monday. What's the big deal? Hmm. You had uh, some interesting initiatives that you attempted to, to pass mm -hmm. in this session, did you not? I did. Uh, the 38 Studios uh, thing was interesting. Now, you know, who's going to argue against, and we have that headline, Steve, um, who's going to argue against an independent prosecutor for 38 Studios. I'm not. I've been screaming for one for years. Me too. Yeah. I have put this bill in every year for, what is it, five years now? So I did it again because I think the people of Rhode Island deserve answers. But who would vote against it? The Democrats did. Hmm. And then there was the car tax headline here. You put in a, a little idea. You and I talked on the radio about it just prior to you doing so. You wanted to take the exemption up from five hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. uh, en route to a seven or eight year plan to, to take to, it yeah, out. Yeah, about seven year plan to get to phase it out. We we had attempted to do that before, um, before two thousand and eight hit, and we went into the recession. When you know you are saying, "Wow, what a great budget we're giving to folks. We're giving them one point three million back in beach fees, and six point three million back in retirement income tax exemptions." This was something I thought was more meaningful for every average, everyday Rhode Islanders, and I think it is what Republicans would do if we were in control. All right. When we come back, we'll add a Republican, State Representative G. Russo, and we'll talk about this policy versus politics, because the representative knows I have some issues with <laughs> tactics. Stay with us. The modern electronics of the General Assembly. Uh, no air conditioning, though, right? Still? Yeah, no. No. Who would have thought we'd have Wi-Fi before we had air conditioning? Right? You know, too much. That's the uh, that's the other chamber, by the way, the State Senate. Uh, Anthony Giarusso joins us, State Representative from East Greenwich, uh, alongside uh, Patricia Morgan, veteran legislator from Coventry. So, welcome. Nice Thank to have you. you. Before, before we get into any rat-a-tat-tat, let, let, let's talk about the overall success or lack thereof you think about this entire budget, okay, uh, and, and what was accomplished here. For the most part, I mean, the, the Speaker and the Senate President can point to some tax reductions, 
Uh, the governor got a, got a win when it came to unemployment taxation. Uh, we've got, you know, retirees in a little bit of shape. You guys are reaching for some more, but uh, you didn't get it all. Uh, I say it's a nibble at success, but there doesn't seem to me to be any demonstrative mantra that comes out of this budget. What do you think? I don't think there was anything game changing. You know, things to to be able to get the, our children that graduate from our colleges to get them good jobs. I mean, it's a start. It's better. It's, you know, any, anything is better than nothing. But we still haven't attacked the regulatory issues that we have in the state and the tax policies. I mean, there has been a reduction of the the corporate minimum tax went from 500 to 450 to 400. Yeah, that's that's okay, but it's not a game changer. Well, what would be what what is a game changer? What 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 defines uh, a seismic shift? Well, it all depends on what industry you're talking about. You know, if you're talking about the uh, the construction industry, they are always complaining about every part of uh, the permitting. You know, you have to go to five or six different things for, for permitting rather than streamlining them. Like, for example, there was a, a gas station that has a, a Dunkin' Donuts attached to it, and it's on a state road. And they said they need DOT, they need they need DEM, they need uh, the health department. Every, just, you know, for if there's a drive through that's another regulation. And in some states... They, they would have a one-stop shop. You go in there and say, this is what I need, and one, two, three, four, five, they hold your hand and it's done. Well, is this administrative or is this legislative? I mean, is, is there a solution for this? Because this is a chronic complaint. The governor has, has studied streamlining. In fact, the governor put a, a pretty nice panel together last year, put 100 grand uh, into an executive order that said, you know what, we should, uh, we should get lean. And that whole crowd of executives volunteered their time, Carl Waddenston being one of the guys, um, and they then took it out of the budget. They took it out of the budget. You tried to save that. I did. I really think that's someplace where we should go. But it, it was makes... hundred grand in. You asked for three hundred. Why? What, what were you doing? Because we need to be more aggressive at making government efficient and effective. Meaning more training into the into more the department. More training. I actually did speak with people from uh, the Office of Performance Management, which is doing the lean initiative, and it's you know they're 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 starting to train people, but it's 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 way way too slow. Um, other states are. Are, have been doing lean initiatives for a decade, two decades. They're saving millions of dollars. Their government is much more efficient, and we're still, we can't even give them a hundred grand. It's, it's beyond foolish. Well, something tells me the governor's going to find that somewhere, that she's going to strip that from somewhere to keep that, 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 that training thing going on, because it has been reaping some benefits, reportedly yeah. saving millions of dollars. Absolutely, but, but doesn't it show the priorities? And that's the problem with this budget, the priorities that it showed are not the priorities that will move us forward as a state. Regular average Rhode Islanders have been suffering since the recession. You know, the, the, their paychecks are down, they're, they're simply not making them up. We, we lost 3,900 jobs in the last two months, right? We need to do something to grow jobs, not just leave it at status quo. Well, the governor quo. has her own program on that. You know, she's picking industries. She's picking winners, and um, she's you know, targeting incentives through commerce with, you know, millions of dollars. That's her plan. She would say she has a plan. What, what is your plan? Well, Dan, what, I, what I'd like to know is, okay, it's great. You're reaching out to other industries that we don't have right now. But has anyone contacted Honeywell when they decided to ship out 500 jobs? You know, just deal with what we have here and say, hey, is there any problems? Is there anything we can do that can, that can make your life easier here in our state? And, and I'll, I, yeah, I hear that all the time, but that, that's not, it's but, not tangible but enough wait, for me. wait, Dan, there's been, I believe, five deals that have been signed. Um, Commerce Rhode Island's budget is $160 million. They've signed five deals, $28 million, if I'm correct on those numbers. Three of those deals were to keep companies from leaving. Why don't we just fix the things that are wrong with our economy, like overregulation, overtaxing, high energy costs, high insurance rates, a, a really hostile litigation um, environment. We need to fix those things. Then people will come more easily. But, but, and we uh, won't have to pay them not to leave. So in, in a bullet point or two, what is the big fix? You just told me what we, sh what we you know, what we're not getting done, but if you had a, what's the big fix? This is, this is where people Could get be. lost with your conversation. It's They're trying to figure, of, uh, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no PowerPoint where people say, okay, I understand what these people are saying and what they stand for. Well, it's the old joke, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time. 
So you have to start somewhere. The speaker would say he's eating the elephant. The speaker would say uh, corporate taxes down, retirees uh, benefiting, uh, unemployment taxes down. That's what the speaker would say. And yet we killed charter schools. And Some me, charter schools. All right. The politics of that are very intriguing. The urban charter schools fare better than the suburban charter schools, even though the Blackstone Valley Prep is hardly a suburban charter school. That's a personal fight between the unions and the lieutenant governor that the governor walked away from and the House Speaker allowed to happen. Well, but this is the issue. One of the things that really moves a state forward is a really good educational system from K through college, right? Um, and we just said that the poor kids in Blackstone Valley Prep or the ones that are down in Compass School in Narragansett, well, they're just going to have to to make yeah, do. I, I agree. It's a terrible right? piece it's a, of legislation. It's, it, it shows bad priorities. Every priority should be about making sure that kids get the best education possible so they move forward Well, I didn't see all the lives. debate. Did you, did you guys point out what should have been pointed out, which is that this was a union hatchet job on, well, on, on, on the charter are. schools? Yeah, if, if you look up the tapes of, there were earlier bills before this came out in the budget of, of bills that would have, essentially would kill the growth of charter schools. And I did mention that. I said at what point, because these kids, they want to be here. There's a lottery. So that, and they're doing really well. So I said, who's looking out for them when they start paying union dues? Yeah, well, you know, and, and Dan, it doesn't I'm, have I'm to be, it a, doesn't have to be union or non-union. What it has to be is we have a $9 billion budget. We should be able to find money if we prioritize it for everybody. We should be able to find the money to keep those charter schools healthy and moving forward. Well, my, my point is, it, it, it's not, it wasn't about the money. It was about retooling the, the format to be able to stick it to the to, to the mayoral academies. That's a political fight that uh, you know ought to be pointed out. And I think, but it it's between Democrats, priorities. by the way. It's between it's between reformer Democrat McKee on this particular issue, and 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 the establishment. When we come back, we'll get back to priorities, policies, politics, and what was really accomplished or not. Stay with us. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that you try to accomplish. So in, the, in the first segment, uh, Representative Morgan, we talked about 38 studios, uh, your effort to grab $750,000 for an independent prosecutor, uh, the car tax and all of that. But here's the thing. Let's start with the car tax. You wanted to rearrange $37 million in the budget. Mm -hmm. On no notice. It was easy, honestly. On no notice. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm a fair-minded legislator, I want to take a look at $37 million worth of adjustments to the budget and have it give it some time. I mean, it, it seems to me, let me just lay it out to, me, to you, it seems to me that on the two issues, the car tax and the 38 Studios stuff, that you guys decided to throw something against the wall so that you, on the record, could pin Democrats into voting no on these issues, so that you could go to people in September and November and say, by the way, we tried to get an investigation of 38 Studios. We tried to... I tried that every tax. year for five years. And by the way, they haven't, you know, they wouldn't play ball. Um, yeah, but your, your proposals evolve every every year. They're not the same. No, pretty much the same. I want an independent investigation of 38 studios. To put but, it in but, every but year where for five your, years. Where's the delegation standing firm a month out of the uh, out of the session to say, look, these are our priorities. This is what we're going to do, and we're going to build constituent support for this stuff so the constituents can feed back. It, you know, you know, on, on budget night, you expect the Democrats to actually sense some movement and support for your and ideas? And yet the Democrats were able to find $75 million in one hour six years ago yeah. in you the dark what? of night. Well, that, and this no, year they weren't. the no, they weren't. Senate was looking for... You know they weren't. They, 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 they didn't, they that, didn't that was, build any support from their constituents. No, but that was a scam. Sorry, no, you're wrong. But that was a scam. Well, That was a scam. All right, and okay, then so they you're, had you're, so it's a it's a different it's a different the, evil. One of the things that fell apart this year, my understanding was uh, criminal justice reform. That was something that hadn't even appeared in the House. There had been no hearings on that, and yet that was one of the things why we stayed until They're five in power. five a.m. Why, why why do you think that your playbook should match theirs? You have it doesn't. But what I am you showing have is how really we hard are on a different. lot of issues, and I give you credit. Those two were flyers. Those two were trying to put something up so you had something to run around with in November. You have to work hard and build constituent um, support 
for these kinds of dramatic changes. You can't throw them out in the middle well, of the night. Car no, tax is not a dramatic no. change. We had, we had, we were phasing out the car tax before the recession. Yeah, and the we're Republican governor back. decided to, to to initiate a removal of that, and everybody bit. So who are you kidding? That was Don Cherry in two thousand eight. But, but there's plenty of constituent support for it. Well, the concept of a lesser car tax. Well, no, no, as they say in Jersey and maybe Cranston, no blank, Sherlock. But then, you know, but but, but but having a pr but, but having a plan in place requires some legwork. No, and there are and there are always plans. We have a whole slate of bills, you know, from removing income tax on veterans, on on social security. These are these are perennial bills that we put in every year. Car tax, I'm not sure if it was per se this year if we put that in to, to eliminate it as a bill. But you you don't have that captive audience until you're at budget night, and now everybody's on the record. Normally you. You put in a bill, and it's and you go before a committee. There might be a question or two. There might be four or five people showing up to testify on either side, and that's it. It goes away. But the car tax is very important. Well, and, you've and got it, a legislative process. You know, unless you're going to rewrite the legislative process, that is the process. When it, you're not in power, you're at a disadvantage. There's no doubt about that. But that's where the legwork comes in. But the so, car tax is like the most regressive tax that we have. Agreed. Uh, we should eliminate it completely and yes. or match Massachusetts Good. formula, at least to make it consistent and affordable. You know, we... But, you know, throwing the thing up at 10 o'clock at night and all of a sudden, oh, you voted no, ha, 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 I mean, me. what is that? When we tried to get rid of the tolls, that was a multi-month initiative on Correct. our part. And we still lost. But you didn't so what are you going to say? If I started five months earlier on the well, car you know tax, I would have I Guess what, Representative? Won? Being in the minority ain't fun. No, but this is it. We showed how Republicans would govern differently. What, just throwing stuff up at 10 o'clock no, at night? No, that, that is something we believe in. And we would, we would govern differently. So if we're ex explaining to people before an election, you're right, it is a political statement, no doubt about it. But if people are attracted to our ideas, then vote for us. Make us the majority. Good. Because finally, we would bring it. You finally admitted what I've been... It is everything that we say, everything that's done down there has a political element well, to it. Uh, no kidding, but that was a political tactic for the election no, season. Not it was not, a, it was not a serious budgetary no. effort. Please. No, it was serious. I mean, there are Final a lot word. of amendments. Final word. Thoughts on uh, what got done or didn't? Well, we, um, the, the debate still goes on for 38 studios, and, the, and the, they always say that it would increase our bond ratings, but, which most people that from the inside that, that know bonds and and know the difference between general and, and moral obligation, say that, that that's not a fact. Mm -hmm. So and obviously if we don't if we don't pay them then it would that would that would kind of take care of the independent investigator. There'll be plenty of flyers in the fall saying this guy and this gal voted against thirty eight in car taxes, I promise you, right? I'm sure there will be. It's part of the program. And if I they vote go. for Republicans, yeah. they'll get those things done. All right. We'll be right back. It's harder to be a Republican in Rhode Island than it is a Democrat, so it takes more work. They know it. They're going to use this stuff in the fall. We'll see how the election comes out. By the way, the politics of gun control, disgusting right now. Uh, that they couldn't even move a watch list preemption, Washington is stuck badly. You can't argue with that. We'll see you on the radio tomorrow at 3 on WPRL. Thanks for watching. Good night.